The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, Brian Broaddus, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. It is Wednesday, February 15th, 2023, season 18, episode number 116. Welcome to the latest edition of The Break. We're live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. We are presented by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. And there's nothing, absolutely nothing that settles me more than when I get everybody back in studio together again. Feels like home. Thank you guys for joining us today. <laughs> Brian's back from Super Bowl. Nick's back from Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, you sent Nick. Yeah. He said, Nick, I, I figured something big was happening. When I'm like doing radio, I looked up and Nick was walking by and I said, <laughs> something's going on here. And he just doesn't kind of show up just to be showing up. I'm so. kind of shocked that y'all didn't like, Nick, get over here. Get on the air. Well, we, we were on and he walked behind us. But Nick just, I, I, this is the thing about Nick. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Nick is kind of this guy that I was kind of watching him. He see he was swimming laps. Yep. He was swimming laps. <laughs> yep. And Nick would start in radio mm-hmm. and he'd go behind radio. We'd go down to TV and then he'd come back past the gambling folks. And then he'd come <laughs> back to radio. So Nick was swimming laps in yeah. that pool. And I felt like that if we asked him to stop, that we would probably it would not be good for us. Because he was figuring <laughs> He was kind of lurking. He had somebody in mind he needed to see. Well, he had yeah. some. Yeah, yeah, there were some directives yeah. well, one, on some things he was trying. to One get. of them was the, our quarterback. Yeah, the quarterback <laughs> was the quarterback because we were right across from the sleep number people. Yeah. And by the way, the sleep number people have a great setup. Yeah, they do. Yeah. I mean, they really had a great. By the way, setup. I love that bed. I, just yeah, so I can it throw is it out there. crazy the how nice their setup. Yeah. I mean, their their platform where they broadcast and they. I didn't see him broadcasting a whole lot. I mean, we're at a table broadcasting, yeah. which is fine. Mm-hmm. Sleep number is like the studio. Yeah, you know, they yes. had it. They had everything. Was everybody coming and laying down, talking. Well, we were, yeah. You know, people, it was kind of a fun thing to, like, lay down on the bed and do radio while you were doing that. Love and it. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing also, too, is that I'm I'm on 105 the 3, uh, 105 3, the fan. 105 the 3? 105 the 3, whatever, <laughs> yeah. Uh, basketball season, the 3. Yeah. Um, they they don't want me then. I mean, the, the, when you go to the Super Bowl yeah. radio, oh no, we could have used you it, when Mrs. McCaffrey showed up. Yeah, well, yeah, you, maybe we're doing a little apologizing. We were doing some of that with Dak as well. That worked out <laughs> good. But if you love sports and particularly football, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah, you, we've done that once. It, it and doesn't it, was it doesn't get great. old it, to just yeah. walk around and every, everybody's got their guys that 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 do it for them. You yeah. Know? And you know when when I walk and I see Tony Dorsett, my, I saw Tony Dorsett every day of my life. Yeah. From like when I was seven years old to fourteen, because I had this poster. I mean, I love Tony Dorsett, and he's sitting down with Earl Campbell. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. Dion, that's, walks that's by. my life, right? Joe yeah. Montana. Well, I mean, it never gets old. When there's that happens. there's sometimes though where being old like I am helps you. Uh huh. We interviewed Carl Eller, mm-hmm. the old Minnesota Viking. And my guys had no idea who Carl sure. Eller was. The wheelchair. It was in a wheelchair. Yeah, he had yeah. his Hall of Fame jacket yeah. on. I mean, he he he. You know, Carl Eller in my time, like growing up, he was a menace. Yeah. I mean, him, Vikings. Harvey Martin, Alan Page, mm-hmm. you know, all these guys. He's Deacon Jones. All these great pass rushers. So my guys, when he sits down, you know, you're kind of like. They're like, oh my gosh, you're looking at me like, okay, Broadus, you got to carry this. <laughs> Take <thing."> over. <laughs> so now I'm firing questions at him about Roger Staubach, handling scrambling, mm-hmm. what it was like to play for Bud Grant, what's it like to stand on the sidelines of both teams on the same sideline. Oh, yeah. You guys didn't get to wear jackets when it was snowing. What mm-hmm. was so you know literally A different I, era? For yeah, sure. and so yeah. like Gavin goes, Gavin Dawson, who I work with, goes, okay, Carl, well, thank you so much, you know, and like. It was basically a one-on-one interview with me yeah. and Carl Eller is what it was. And that's just because of growing up and knowing. But Nick's right. Sometimes you walk around that room and there's so many people, you don't see everybody. Uh-huh. You just kind of, you're walking you're, and you turn and you're like, oh, I just missed. Yeah. Oh, I just, you know, and you're looking this way, you're looking ahead, 
But over here to your left is somebody you should have probably stopped and said hello to. One per one people, uh, some of the people we did see was that, and I was I told Derek, I mean, you got a little bit of a coaching tree happening here. There's a lot of former <laughs> yeah. Dallas Cowboys employees yeah. rolling around there yeah. too. Some yeah. of the some of the some behind the media people. guys, yeah, yeah. Uh, doing some big things. Four, five, six yeah. people, and that you, I saw. the ones you mentioned weren't even the four I was yeah. thinking that I know that we're going to be. Yeah, there, I was so. like, I, I just seen four, and you, and you guessed four, and they were all they were all not the ones I was see, thinking of, but they all showed up. There's, yeah. There's a couple of things that happened during that Super Bowl, and I'm sorry, I'm here story time guy. There's a couple things. I didn't get to go to Fox, had a deal where they had all their talent out. Mm -hmm. They were in a room, second floor. You can go talk to Jimmy Johnson and all that. And Hellman. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Of course, Hellman, Hellman, yeah, yeah, of course. (laughs) And so, but, you know, I mean, and the other thing was, I wish I would have been able to go, because we flew in the Monday night. They had the big opening for the media. Uh I'd love to have seen Andy Reid. Mm. I'd love to have gone up and talked to Andy Reid again. I had a really great time. I I, uh, I got to interview, talk to Jim McMahon again. And if you ever know my stories about yeah. Jim McMahon, I was his Uber driver before there was Uber. Like when he would go out drinking and you know, and, and I used to he used to give me his wallet and all right, take care of everything, Brian. I'm you know make make sure I get here. And so I told stories on the air about him. And I, his face lit up remembering these stories, and I was so happy because, you know, these, these players, some of the older ones are struggling. Mm-hmm. You know, they're struggling with the bad equipment they played with and the concussions and things like that. And I just was so happy that I got to see him again and kind of relive all those stories. Yeah, I bet, I bet. And speaking of happy, I mean, do you want to talk about – how happy you were when the final score of the game the other day. Did you pick it? Well, hold, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get into that, you know, with the NFL going international, mm-hmm. we have a lot of Cowboys fan craving for Spanish content. Yeah, and that's why you're we here. Were, we were lacking that week. Yeah. So next year... Vegas. You know, <laughs> uh, we got we got to make it. I'm just trying to figure out how I get in on that. Hey, con- they were asking I will tell you for this. things about Micah, yeah. Dak... Yeah. Man of the year, you know, they care about that stuff I, in Spanish, too. I will tell you this. I will tell you this. Nick came back from Super Bowl, and he's like, hey, man, I, I really think I really think next year we ought to consider starting every year to send a crew to Super Bowl, and let's just get on Radio Row and do some content from Radio Row. And as I started thinking about it, I was like, you know, all the former Cowboys and people related to the Cowboys that are in that environment, we could actually do some fun content. I, I think we might consider that. and. We'll see if you make that trip, Amber. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, because <laughs> Spanish is not important. No, now? you will definitely okay. be. Okay. If we go, you will definitely be there. No doubt yeah. about it. You will okay. be there. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's what I like hearing. No, I'm just trying yeah. to get in on this whole experience yeah. because that's the one thing I haven't experienced yet being well, we here did, with the Cowboys. I'll tell you this we did it one year, one year when the Super Bowl was here in Dallas. Uh, we I got storm. a spot on Radio Row, and and we and we that was a yeah, weird year storm. because we yeah. couldn't get there every day, but we right. did do a couple days. We did shows down there, and it was it was really cool because there were all these people yeah. that were walking through. And if you're a big fan of the NFL and have been a fan for a long time, it's cool just because you you look up and you do notice people that that are from your childhood that played. Yeah. That are now walking around, and and it's just cool to see all these people in this one environment. It's similar when we went to Hall of Fame and went to Jerry's party. It's just all the people that are your childhood idols I, that are well, all there also in it's one like, place. I think that week everyone is basically in a good mood, yeah. and you know that's when you get people to come up to you and wanting to talk to you, and they're okay with kind of just mm-hmm. being friendly. It's a whole different environment than. Yeah. During the season, you trying to get content or whatever. Well, they're all there to push something. Too. Yeah, yeah. The reason why they're there is yeah, to you have to promote talk something. something. You have to yeah. talk about something. Yeah. The only team that I saw there, I believe, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, was the Raiders. Man. The Raiders were set up back by where TV was over there in the yeah. corner area. Raiders. The Raiders, but yeah, the Raiders seem to go to every one of these things. I mean, They'll they have, a, they have a great budget for whatever they're doing. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, the Ra- I mean, I see them everywhere. Everywhere I've ever gone, the Raiders guys and gals are kind of hanging out there and they're doing content as well. It's, but you're right. It's it's a great opportunity to meet people and the and the atmosphere of it is. Yeah, once you get past, okay, what hot sauce are you pushing? What pork rinds are you eating? <laughs> yeah. You know, what bed are you sleeping in? You can get some really good content. You yeah. really can. All right, let's talk a little bit about that Super Bowl. I want to get some opinions, and I really want to get it from a Cowboys point of view. Can I ask a question about sure, that? absolutely. Yeah, and I don't mean to interrupt you because that's one of my questions I had for you guys. Yeah. And, and I, I, I said this. I said and one of the things I said, give me a trait from the Super Bowl teams you wish the Cowboys had. 
if when you're watching that game, give me a trait or something that in that game you said, man, I wish the Cowboys had had that. Um, Patrick Mahomes' arm. <laughs> no, a uh, trait that they have. Uh, something the way that maybe that team was built. I, or no some way I'll give you one, and I think the Cowboys have it. I just don't think they use it, which is how many times did you see Jalen Hurts on short yardage situations yeah. just burrow up the middle of yeah. the of the offense? And and I'm looking at it, I'm like, that could do that. Why don't the Cowboys do that more frequently? Because I do think that that's something that Dallas has the capability to do. They just don't. They're going to change the rule. They're not changing that rule. I don't. I, I don't buy it. I don't I buy it. I, think, I don't think they're going to let people push like I that. don't buy it. I think they're going to – just because one team's good at it, you don't change the rule because one team's good at it, right? I, I don't think. I think the reason to what Nick is talking about, I think they're worried about bodies on top of bodies. You know, and, and I know football is a, a leverage game, push, try and create space. They're worried about – Men on top of men on top of, you know. But and, that's and, rugby. And, 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 I mean, they do I it know, in rugby. I know, but they're they're worried about, like, guys, you know, potential knee injuries, back injuries. I know it's blocking. I know it's blocking. Yeah. I can see where the league, where the competition committee says, mm-hmm. we're not going to allow you to line three guys up behind your quarterback yeah. and push him or any ball carrier that decides to, you know, take a snap. I, I do think that they're, they're worried about that. That just that mass of bodies on top of think, bodies to create back problems, knee problems, neck problems. Yeah. You know, a lot of that. I think you, what you can do is you could say uh, eligible players are not allowed to push. So if the if running back gets six, six yards and then he gets stopped and then the linemen yeah. come in and shove, that's yeah. maybe that's one thing. But you can't just line. I, I don't know this. I'm just saying that's one way to say eligible guys in the backfield as a designed play to do that. I, I just have a feeling things happen in, when playoff controversy. I don't even know if it's a controversy, but when things happen, when there's a pass interference that, that doesn't get called, in the you know with the Rams Saints, they change it. Or if Josh Allen doesn't get a turn in the in the postseason, well then they change that rule. Mm-hmm. Or they don't have three quarterbacks, so the Niners don't have enough quarterbacks. They're going to change that rule. So mm-hmm. things that happen in the playoffs tend to get changed with the competition committee. Yeah, I just don't know if this one feels to me like one where you need to change it. It's this team was really good at it, and like I told you, Nick, when we were talking about the it, quarterbacks are the, powerful guys. That's yeah, true. but body, I think I think the other part guy, to it yeah. too is y- you will have this off season. There will be five, six, seven teams that will spend this off season. Defensive coordinators will spend this off season figuring out how to stop that because that's the nature of the NFL. Right. You have some team that does something extremely well, and particularly the teams that are in that division that know they're going to have to face it twice a year. They'll spend this offseason thinking, how do we stop that? And so it'll it'll yeah. solve itself. Well, it, it's just the nature of the NFL. We got into a discussion on the radio. Why wouldn't Philadelphia go for two every play with that kind of attack? I agree. You know, why would you not even try? I mean, literally, you could you, know, you could affect games by every time that you score. As much as they score, don't kick extra points. If I know I'm going to get a yard, two yards every single time, why not just, you know, you're going to get somebody to line up off sides because they're going to probably try and stop it that way, the submarining, the things like that. You know, I, I if you know, we, that, like Philly, if they're, they're so proficient at it mm-hmm. that you're like, why don't they go for two? I mean, they can literally get two yards every time they run that play. Yep. You know, and so I, I could see it, you know, but. You know, you're, I think you're right, Derek. I mean, I think they're worried about player safety, and and that makes not, sense. Not that, I get it, that. not that it always matters in player safety for them because the league does things that are incredibly stupid for player safety. But I think this is one of those times that they're probably looking at it and going, "You've created an, an unfair advantage here," you know, and that's what we're gonna. But that's football. That's you know, you create. Heck, Kansas City run ran two plays that scored that Philadelphia didn't even bother to cover. That was an advantage. They knew you were playing man coverage and down on the goal line, and we're going to mess with your, you know, the way you bump and cover and stuff like that. And so that's what football is all about, really is. Did you have one? Do you have a, a trait that you liked from the teams? Oh, uh, a kicker you can trust. Apparently, <laughs> I mean that that was pretty amazing the way they handled that la- the, those last few seconds of the game. Absolutely it was smart. Great. It was the right way to do it. Yeah, I mean. but it, it, I was. F- and, and this, that's not even my team, but I was freaking out because I'm like, just get, in the, just get the points, get inside. Get in. But yeah. no, the way they handled that and just being able to trust their kicker in that way, I'm like, man, I wish we had that. Um, 
But it was pretty impressive, both quarterbacks. Everything that they did, even Mahomes, him uh, him coming out, what was it, the injury when he kind of got banged up mm-hmm. a little bit, and then getting back there and playing the way that he did, that was pretty amazing. So, And, and one of the things, it's like how fast he gets rid of the ball at yeah. times. It's it just boom, boom, boom. That's another thing I wish we kind of had. And Dak has shown signs of doing that, but it's just, again, not consistent enough, not in a regular basis where you're constantly being able to trust that part of his game. So just the arm, the quickness, alongside with Hurts' ability to kind of escape and run. And Dak, I think he can he he can do those things. Mm-hmm. He, you've seen him do those things, but just how do you get him to do it week to week every game? I wish the trade I wish they had was to block Philly the way that Kansas City did, mm-hmm. the way they can that eliminate that pass rush. Yeah. That Going into that game, it was going to be, could they block this front? And could they give Mahomes, who is banged up, enough time to throw the ball? And you mentioned how quickly the ball gets out. Let's, let's not act like that the receivers, other than the tight end, are Kansas City's real weapons. Mm-hmm. You know, They did a great job running the football one. And they did a really, really good job of not letting Hassan Reddick kill them in that football game. And they schemed those receivers they, open. And they quite a schemed bit. those yeah. guys open. To me, those are the traits. I, if I'm looking, if you're in, uh, just looking to play Philadelphia, I'm like, let me block them that way every every time I play them. Yeah. That, give me that ability to 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 neutralize their front. And the thing about Philly, and we've all known this because we followed them all year, being a divisional team. Philadelphia scores a lot of points in the second quarter. First half, they're one of the best. Mm-hmm. The second half, they they were close to losing some games. Yeah, you said but, that all year. Yeah, yeah. You they, that, yeah, they will score early, and then all of a sudden, the second half, teams kind of figure things out with them. Whether they take the foot off the gas or they just don't, they're not as aggressive as they need to be. But that's what got Kansas City back in that game. It was a ten point lead, and I was like going. Kansas City's got them right where they want them here. Kansas City's good here because Philadelphia will not – Philadelphia does not put their foot on the gas and try and murder people in the second half. The Giants were the team that didn't figure it out. They lost three times. But when Washington played them again, they beat them. When Dallas played them again, they beat them. Now, obviously, Hurts didn't play. But, uh, you know, Jimmy Johnson, I believe, said that in the middle of the year that that maybe Philly teams are going to figure them out. But if you look at Andy Reid's record coming off a bye week, his whole career, I think it's something ridiculous, like 22 and 3 or something like, and and basically give him two weeks, which is what he had here, Mm -hmm. another time to have two weeks you give him that much time you know he, he's he's amazing I'll say another another aspect too is a lot of these misdirection plays you see are run off the fact of of Kelsey when you have a tight end that can line up the way he does Kittle does it in San Francisco it is an unbelievable weapon Schultz is a good tight end but you don't use him in a way like that where he's not lined up as a receiver or it could hurt you in so many other ways. That touchdown that Tony caught, the first one where he went, it's all because of Kelsey. Kelsey's lined up in the slot. Who's going to cover him? Oh, my God, he's coming inside. Slay's got him. No, everyone's worried about him wide open. I mean, I, I just think having a tight end like that is a weapon, even when he doesn't even touch the ball. Yep. All right, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the Hall of Fame, a couple mm-hmm. guys getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, and uh, we want, I'll ask the question, uh, Darren Woodson, who did not get in, was he hurt uh, in some respects of getting in because of the fact that the Cowboys got two other guys in? We'll talk about that when we come back, DallasCowboys.com radio. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. What do you call a group of grown men and women with their faces painted silver and blue who get together every week to share a three-hour-long ritual of jumping, sinking, and toasting Miller Lite in 10-gallon hats while yelling, how about them cowboys? You call it Miller Time in Dallas. Here's to the cowboys. Here's to the original light beer. It's Miller Time. Celebrate responsibly. 2021 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys? 
Jack Black. Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. When you build, you start with the foundation. And home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America N.A. Equal housing lender. Credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Back to the break. Welcome back. Second segment of The Break Life in the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. The segment presented by Blockchain.com. Dot com. Okay. There we go. All right. Let's uh, let's talk about the Hall of Fame. Here, sorry. <laughs> you know, we're all getting back Sometimes used to this. Sometimes that we're feels like that's the most exciting thing about the show, <laughs> just waiting com. for that thing. <laughs> well, when Brian's not there, and I, I feel like I've got to... Got to make up for it. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to our guys, DeMarcus Ware, Chuck Howley, uh, being selected yeah. to the uh, Pro Football Hall okay. of Fame. Um, something that, that I think... We all agree. Demarcus was probably due last year in his first year of eligibility. Chuck Howley waited obviously a very, very long time. Too long. But a guy that that's very uh, deserving. Uh, so congratulations to those guys. We still wait on on Darren Woodson, and uh, and it's interesting because I think I, I've heard several different members of the 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 group that votes for the Hall of Fame talk about Darren Woodson, and every time what I hear in that conversation is Darren Woodson deserves to be in. He's going to get in at some point. Whatever reason, it just hasn't happened to this point. Do you guys think that this year it was him not getting in was more of a reflection of the fact that Ware and Howley did get in and it just wasn't going to be a a year where they were going to put three Cowboys in at once? Can I say something? I was with Darren Woodson on Friday afternoon in a uh, a Phoenix uh, terminal at the gate. And he was with his wife and small child. And they had to walk the small child away because I was cussing so much about telling his wife what I thought about the whole situation. And Darren just stood there the whole time and smiled. You know, he took it a lot better than I would have, Mm. you know. And I think it – I don't think it has anything to do – let me say something real quick about Chuck Howley. I think we need to do a better job of getting these veteran members in if chuck kelly was good to be in this time he was good to be in five years ago ten years ago mm-hmm. let's make it if we're trying to get these guys into the hall of fame that they realize that they can fully realize the honor mm-hmm. that they've been bestowed you know i think there's times where you get to a certain point and you're wondering age has a factor in this whether you know chuck Halley, hey i'm in the hall of fame well great does he you know i mean i'm not trying to be sad here or anything like that i'm just saying you got we've got to do a better job of when these guys, the, their lives are to that point where they, they can they can be a part of this. They can enjoy it. Enjoy yeah. it. You know, and enjoy all that. The thing with Darren Woodson is, and I, I will I I will say this, I've been with Leroy Butler in Green Bay. Darren Woodson's a better player. I've seen John Lynch play a bunch. He is a better player than John Lynch. You know, Troy Palomolo and Ed Reed and those guys, that's to me where Darren Woodson is. You know, but he should have gone in before Leroy Butler went in, and he should have gone in before John Lynch went in. And I don't think it has anything to do with the cowboy number of people. I just, you know, to me, I, I just don't feel like that these voters have a really a great grasp of what this football player was. And I'm talking about Darren Woodson. He never came off the field. Never. He played on all your special teams. Mm-hmm. He played on all your defensive snaps. The Dallas Cowboys, he's the all-time leading tackler. Am I correct about that, Nick, in mm-hmm. Dallas Cowboy history? Yep. Dallas Cowboys, think of all the defensive players that are in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. He is the leading tackler of the Dallas Cowboys, a storied franchise. Okay? You have to put that guy in. And, and this waiting around and, well, I don't know. Well, we got this safety, that safety. No, the safeties you're putting in are not as good as the safety that's waiting. It's just not. And I've been I've been with Leroy Butler, and I love Leroy Butler. He's not a better player than Darren Woodson. I'm sorry, he's not. And so I have a real problem with the voters. I really do. And we should be to the point now where voters have seen these guys play. 
It's not like we're watching, you know, watching Deacon Jones play and we're now having to vote. Well, I really didn't see Deacon Jones play. You should know what a great player Darren Woodson was, you know. And the, and the fact that he's not in the Hall of Fame right now, I, I think, is an, is an absolute crime. I really, really do. Yeah. Um, Demarcus, um, you know, obviously, that you know, that's – that was he should have happened last year. You know, that's another flaw in my opinion of the of the voting system of, that they're they're trying to. I think they're really trying to draw a line in the sand about who it's a first ballot guy and what isn't. And so they, you know they didn't. I don't think that he should have gone in last year because last year's class wasn't as good as this year's class. But I just think that they're trying to to eliminate that. But I mean, obviously deserving. Um, you know, from the very moment he started playing football uh, with the Cowboys, it was talked about, well, you know, he's not ready for the Hall of Fame. And Parcells tried to, you know, do that. And, and obviously he is, you know, he is now. But, I mean, that was kind of the trajectory of his career. Was Could he, could he beat the next LT for Parcells? Could he be a Hall of Famer? And he wasn't the next LT. Um, who knows if there anyone will be. But certainly, uh, you know, Ware was deserving. And I think it helped him, obviously, to go to Denver and win a championship there. And Von Miller talk about how instrumental he was for his career. So, um, you know, th- that obviously deserving. But like he said, he knows exactly where he is. He's in the Hall of Fame. Um, I don't know if Chuck Kelly does. I don't know if he knows that. Yeah. I mean, he's got dementia right now. He's 80 something years old. 85 years 85. old. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. You said five to 10 years, 40 years. Yeah, and he hadn't see, made a play in forty five years. See, that's what I'm saying. If you're what's if doing? you're to the point where you could be in the hall and let me let me say something. Guys like Rick Goslin, Shereen Williams, Clark Judge, people that I know that vote for the Hall of Fame, they're the ones championing yeah, Chuck Halley. They're Halley. pushing these they're, guys. Yeah. They're pushing for Rayfield Wright, Bob Hayes, mm-hmm. Chuck Halley. And you know, Rick Goslin is from Detroit, Michigan. He he has no Biased as a Pittsburgh guy or something like, well, you got to put in Jack Ham. You got to put in, you know, this guy. You got to put in that guy. No, I mean, they le- legitimately are fighting. But the problem I have, I think the league is, or the Hall of Fame voters have done a better job of trying to right some of the wrongs. Mm-hmm. I think that's Darren, why they Darren, have that senior Darren group Woodson, now. Yeah. yeah, Darren Woodson is a wrong. Yeah. That's a wrong right now. That That is a wrong. I, I, I said it earlier. <laughs> Troy Palomalo, Ed Reed, those are those are different cats. You know, the guys you've put in now were good players. They're not as good as this guy. And I and I'm and I don't I'm not making it a personal thing. I competed against this guy. I mean, and I've been with great players my my 13 years of scouting. He is the best player I've ever been with. I've been with Reggie White. I've been with Reggie White. I've been with like Brett Favre. I've been with some great players. Emmett Smith, been great players. This guy deserves to be that guy. He absolutely Bill, deserves Bill to Parcells be that. Bill Parcells coached him one year, says he's one of the top five players he's ever coached. And that's a lot from a guy like Bill Parcells. And, exactly. Bill's, yeah. and Bill's seen a ton. Well, yeah. you know who number yeah. one is. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, two, three, and four, I mean, I'm, I'm not Jim Burke. sure. Jim oh. <laughs> <laughs> doubt he's in that, that group, but, uh, you know, I mean, but— Nothing against Jim Burt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I guarantee you, if he had listed his five, Lawrence Taylor, Curtis Martin— he loved Curtis Martin. Yeah, he did. He loved uh, Curtis would Martin. be there, and you know, I don't, I don't know some of the others. I mean, he loved Banks and all that, but yeah. but, but to have Woodson for Mark one Bavaro year, Mark Bavaro probably was in that group. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, maybe Witten. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. So, but. See, that's the thing. I, I just, I just find it so tough. And and Darren Woodson, such a class act. He's standing there and he's just smiling. And literally, I am losing my mind at a gate at the airport. And his poor wife, I, she did. She had to cover the little kid's ears. I'm sorry. I, mean, <laughs> I, know, I, I apologize. I, I did. She just I smiled. completely Man. agree and understand the whole, like, where the system is messed up as far as, like, everything you just said, Brian. Right. But at the same time, at this point, for this year, I'm like, okay. And this may sound insensitive because it's not me. Obviously, I would want the award this year. Give it to me now, today. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, what's the big deal in a way because you know you're gonna get it you're you're a step closer than you've ever been before and he's not that old he's still relatively young and yes you want him to get it this year but it's it's like one of those things i would assume next year he gets in uh, you would hope so, I, I'm but only, every time, only, every year, it just the, you think it's gonna happen. It doesn't happen, but it it just feels like he's closer than he's ever been. So it, at some there. point, it's gonna get there very yeah, soon. No, you're right. And and my argument is, 
two players went in that aren't as good as him. That's my argument. Yeah. I, 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 I totally see what you're saying. I totally get it that, well, eventually he'll get in. I'm like, oh, okay, good, he'll get in. Well, what about these other two guys that are good football players? Good not football good. players, yeah. but not as good. See, that's the thing that bothers me. It's all about, it's not the hall of good. It's a hall of greats. Z- and, he, and he is, you know, he's a, Darren Woodson is a great football player. And Zach Thomas, who also played for the Cowboys one year, but he's, mm-hmm. a, he's a Miami Dolphin, of course. Uh, he was at this level four years in a row. So, so it's a kind of a process, and that's what Woodson talked about, that, you know, you, you, unless you're a first ballot guy, you get to 15, you waited so long to get to 15, it's going to be a little bit. Charles Haley took a little bit of time to kind of get, get to that point, too. Which is a travesty Sure, in my but, yeah, but I'm yeah. just saying, it, it's it's a process. You're right. It'll it'll happen. It'll get there. Um, but he to say that Darren's a class act is just, I mean, that's just like no, that's, that's And that's probably the part. I think. I'm just talking about a football player. Yeah. I mean, we, we could, the, he, you know, Leroy Butler's a nice guy. John Lynch is a nice guy. Darren Woodson's a nice guy. It's about football. It's about lining up and playing. He is the all-time leading tackler for one of the most storied franchises in NFL history. And he is waiting to get into the Hall of Fame? Yeah. yeah. I, that's, that's the issue I have, and especially with mm. who's ahead of him, who went ahead of him. Yeah. That's the problem I have right now. Well, we will be hoping that next year or the year mm-hmm. after or sometime soon yeah. uh, he will get his just due because I think, I think there's a general consensus among most fans and certainly – among some of the, a lot of the people I've heard that have done interviews who are on that voting committee yeah. that have said Darren Woodson deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, yeah. and so I think there's there's kind of that general consensus, like you said, Nick. Maybe that's just a matter Stop of time. Stop talking about it. Goes. Exactly, get it done. Stop talking and about let's it. Let's be able let's be able to celebrate uh, Darren Woodson. Rally the damn getting votes. Getting into the Hall go. of Fame at some point. Yeah. All right, we're going to take our final break. We'll come back. Brian's got a game for us. He's got some questions. We're going to go through those in our final segment. We'll be back. DallasCowboys.com radio. The season is finally here. For months, we've been gearing up to win. Now it's time for the team that performs on any field, United Ag and Turf. With John Deere zero turns for mowing, compact tractors for loading, mini excavators for digging, Gator utility vehicles for hauling, implements for grading, hay tools for baling, United Ag and Turf for winning. The official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com for more. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savanna. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Little sweet! Did you get to work on time? Yeah, but I just realized it's Sunday. Little sweet says head on home. Dr. Pepper's on its way. So sweet, unique. Baby, there's nothing better. I bet you've probably done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. Did you invest your nest egg in an NFT? Yeah, and I don't even know what that is. It's a non-fungible token. Everyone's done something that deserves a Dr. Pepper. When you build, you start with the foundation. And home ownership is a foundation of a stable future. The Bank of America Community Home Ownership Commitment has helped over 34,000 people lay the groundwork so far. With up to $10,000 towards your down payment or 3% of the purchase price, whichever is less, the satisfaction of owning your own place can become a reality. Visit bankofamerica.com slash homeowner to learn more. What would you like the power to do? Bank of America N.A. Equal housing lender. Credit and collateral is subject to approval. Restrictions apply. This is not a commitment to lend. Back to the break. Welcome back. It is the final segment of The Break, live from the SWBC Mortgage Studios at the Star. Brian, you got a game for us? I do. I do. I do. Okay, AG. (laughs) Coaching situation in NFC East that affects the Cowboys more. Mike McCarthy calling plays or Philadelphia losing both their coordinators? Wait, say again? Coaching situation in NFC East that affects the Cowboys more. Mike McCarthy now calling the plays, or the fact that Philadelphia just lost their two coordinators? Um, I would say 
Feely. We don't know the replacement. They haven't. No, they, no both their guys yet. just got the gigs. So they're they're trying. They're hunting up to. Yeah. They lost their offensive coordinator and their defensive coordinator. And then I'm trying to ask you here is. No, no, no. I, I got your question. I was yeah. thinking who, because we don't know yet. But but I would say probably what's happening over there in Philly with those changes. I mean, with Mike, I don't really fully know <clears throat> how he's going to be calling the plays and taking over that whole offense. But you know he has the experience and all of that. He's been here for a while now. With Philly, you, that, those are two big changes right. overall. So I'm curious to see what happens there and the fact that they got to the Super Bowl. And, you know, people want to pull up the schedules that they had, the people that they went up against this yeah. year, and just kind of say, well, it's, they just had a favorable schedule. But the reality is they still made it to the Super Bowl, they and the they games. still show things in the game that – were pretty impressive, and 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 you got to give them credit for that. So anytime you have changes like that as uh, at the coordinator position, you're hoping for us, the Cowboys, that it takes them a whole year maybe to kind of get things figured out again and, and just things clicking. So I would say maybe maybe that because I see that as a biggest change as opposed to Mike calling the plays. Nick? I'm going to go with Mike calling the plays just because I think that, you know, it, it'll change. Uh, it, 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 the Cowboys lost, what, a couple of overtime games. They lost some close games. You know, an extra series here um, that stalled at midfield. They, they could have kicked a field goal or scored a touchdown. I think I think calling the plays is going to affect a, little, a few more games to kind of put them over the top. I think the Eagles will, will be good. They'll, they'll have good coordinators. They have good players. And so I, I, I think the call on the plays, I mean, it's a good question, but I, I'd go call the plays. I agree with Nick, and the reason why I agree with Nick is as long as Howie Roseman is still there, yeah. I don't know if the coordinators matter, matter a ton. Yeah. Like He's turned over this coaching staff a couple times and gone to the Super Bowl with two different staffs. So that says to me that it's more about them building the players that they need to build. They can put in the right guys to be able to do what they need to do from a coordinator standpoint. So I don't know that that's going to be a huge deal for them. I hope, I hope that having Mike McCarthy call plays – is a big change for the Cowboys. We don't know. We'll see. Right. Uh, that's what I'm hoping. But but the fact of the matter and is, I just with Philly, I think they they have the players. So and I'm going to bank on the fact that him calling the plays will help him be a manager of the game even better. I think it'll help him. I mean, I don't know. Some people think it might hurt. I think it'll help him manage the games better. You know what? I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. What they will do is they will say, "Give me a game management coach. Give me a guy who sits mm-hmm. there." And manages the game and gets in the head coach's ear and says, hey, Mike, think about this. This is coming up here. Hey, Mike, hey, did you notice that the clock is running down on us? Like, yeah. I, let help the coach out so the coach can have somebody who is only thinking about game management situations. That helps. I think every team in the NFL should do it. And I don't I, I to this day don't understand why they don't have a game management coach, coach for every team. But go ahead. All right, Derek, I'll come back to you on this one. Or actually, Nick, I'll cut to you right. on this one. Derek just gave a good answer there. So you guys all gave great answers, by the way. Thank you. Because uh, you know me, I'd tell you if you didn't give a good you answer. You would. <laughs> and you wouldn't of, even wait till we got there. You tell us I'm right in the kind, moment. I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> Hard to get along with. All right, uh, Nick, hardest to get a contract extension from Lamb or Diggs? Mm. The, um. By Let way. me ask you this question. Way, I can I ask this? I know why you're laughing. Can I, can I, can I ask this funny. question on our show though? Is that yeah. fair? Is that a fair question? Yeah. That, yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's okay. go for it. I don't want to get us in trouble or anything. Oh like no, that. no. Hardest to get, <laughs> hardest to get a contract extension from Lamb or Dix? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the first time I've actually thought about Diggs' contract in anything that I've done. Um, sorry, inside joke that wasn't inside. Uh, I think I. I think Trayvon will be a little tougher because I believe that Trayvon is going to be the highest paid corner in the NFL. I don't think Lamb could could say that, and I think so. That being said, I think it'll be a little tougher to get uh, Diggs. Plus, he's a he's got one year left. You, know, you got a couple yeah. years for for CD that you could work with. So I think Trayvon, you know, his brother's in the league. He knows about big deals and all that stuff. I, I I think that he's going to try to get the, the to be the highest paid uh, defensive player or cornerback in the league. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and I think it's even more complicated by the fact that you know when you start talking about cornerbacks, 
you look at a lot of different things. You can look at the interceptions. And the first year he had all those interceptions. This year he didn't quite have as many. And those are the kinds of things that then turn into negotiating reasons, right? Ro- mm-hmm. Negotiating uh, things that you talk about. And so I, I think it's going to be a, a little bit of a challenging um, negotiation. But I think at the end of the day, you're right, Nick. Like he is one of the best in the league, so he's gonna he's gonna set the market. You would think. Yeah. And anytime you got a guy that's gonna set the market, it's gonna be a hard negotiation. It's gonna have to be a hard negotiation. Ag, I agree with that as well. And but with Lamb, I just think that the Cowboys would be more on board. Like they're not gonna. First, who do they have behind Lamb? Right. Nobody else. Who knows who they draft and and what position? How high? But aside from that, they're not going to let their 88 just walk out that easily. You know, he's part of the face of the franchise right now. So the Cowboys, we one thing we know is when they they want something, they make it happen and they get it done. So I, I think that overall they would be more committed into making a, an investment in CeeDee Lamb rather than Trevon Diggs. I worry about Diggs trying to get to $21 million. I worry about that because mm-hmm. that's what there's three guys that make twenty twenty one million dollars in this league, and I wonder if the Cowboys really feel like. And I'm just again, I'm not. This is just me talking. I'm not. I haven't talked to anybody in the Cowboys about this, but I would just be curious to see if they see him as a twenty twenty one million dollar year player. I I I think they they should honestly. I think yeah. he's I think he's one of the the best players on this team, and I think when you look at the losses they had. Jacksonville, Green Bay, Philly, the guys on the other side were giving up plays. Yeah. They 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 need to invest in cornerback. Mm-hmm. Cornerback may may need to be the first round pick, you know, or or at least if there is one, I don't know what the talent looks like there, but but in the top few picks because cornerback I think hurt him at times this year and he and it could have hurt him a lot worse if he's not shutting down half of his side. Yeah, and that that's that's the point that needs to be made about that is in this instance don't get caught up in the interception numbers. No. Yeah. He, what he did in the first year is the reason why he didn't get as many interceptions this year. Because teams are like, I ain't throwing over there. Like, if I got options, especially with, I'm throwing, yeah, yeah, I'm throwing with, somewhere yeah. else. And that tells you just how good and how respected he is as a cornerback. Yeah. you got to factor that part in. Yeah. And it's, that's not about the numbers. You know? Yeah. I think they're going to bring up the tackling stuff, though, too. Oh, the tackling, yeah. yeah. I think I just you know, a negotiation like this when you're talking I, I know, about setting the market, it's all that stuff's going to be fair. Game. I know that's everything. Every, you know, I, I think it's going to be harder for Diggs. I just do. Yeah. I just feel like he's going to. He's. I think Diggs is a is a literally dig in guy. Mm-hmm. I can see him digging in and saying, "Listen, no, I'm I'm worth yeah. I'm worth more than this." I don't know if you'll see him in the off season if if they don't get a deal. Yeah. I, I could I could see a yeah. off season, which I, isn't a huge holdout. I but, could be. Yeah. yeah, that could be tough. All right, Derek. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> earliest the earliest round the Cowboys will draft a quarterback. Oh. Quarterback, okay. Um, is this what I what I think or what I, I what just, I want? I'm just whatever. However you want to answer okay. that. All right. I, the earliest say, you think the Cowboys are going to draft a quarterback with all the things they got the round they, with all the things they got going on right now, where they need some reinforcements. I w- I don't think they should do that until at the earliest, maybe fourth or fifth round. Either one, pick one. <laughs> My preference, fifth round. Okay. What do you think they're going to do? I think that just depends on how the board falls. Like I, yeah. I, I don't know enough about who's going to be there at each sure. round, but I, I would say I was about to put it like this. Draft show coming up. I know, next. right? I'll put it like <laughs> this: if they if they had a guy that they really loved. As er, and, and it was he was a better value than the other round uh, the other yeah. positions. Yeah. I could see him doing it as early as third. Yeah, mm. yeah. Nick. Well, I think I think the the key with the draft always is that there's a big there's a big uh, event happening before that with free agency. Mm. Right. So it is tough to know you know what happens with Cooper Rush. Do they decide? Hey, we're keeping Chargers. him. We're keeping him as our, <laughs> as our backup. If not, then if he, you know if Chargers. he goes if he goes somewhere else, fine. But but I'm, I, if if they said, hey, we're going to invest in a backup and have him here, then I think that changes the question a little bit. But here's the thing, though, and we talked about this on last week's show. Whoever they might draft this year, the likelihood they'll be ready to be a backup this year is probably really small, right? Depends where you draft them. It, you're not drafting, drafting them in the top of the first round because you don't have a top first round pick. You start talking about anything lower than mid first round, it's hard to think they're going to be ready to start this year. If right? I drafted a third round quarterback, I would imagine he could be the backup. 
Really? Yeah. Yeah. In, in year one? Yeah, that's why he's in the third round. I mean, that's, that's the difference between. Yeah. That's the. See, difference. I look at that as I think that's I I think that's it's more likely you could have a guy like that you could rely on by year two, three, four. I don't know if year one I would want to rely on them as a backup I, in an offense where I have a quarterback why they that I want it. to run the ball. That's why they don't do it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's why they don't do it a whole lot because yeah. you you don't you don't you want your second or third round pick to play. Right. That's my point. Yeah. So, that's my point. Yeah. How about you, Ag? I think that. To me personally, I, I would think it all comes down to what they decide to do in free agency. As far as other needs, are they going to be investing? Because otherwise, if it, otherwise, if they handle free agency as they have the past couple of years, I just find it hard to believe that they would invest even a fourth round pick on a quarterback. You have so many other needs. You have a lot of key guys that are about to become free agents for the Cowboys. So to me, I have, even though Jerry came out and said that they're planning on drafting a quarterback every year now. So, mm-hmm. but I, I would say if they do, it would be fifth or up. Would this be a weird draft if they take a running back in the first round and a quarterback in the third? Hmm. How would you look at that? Like, okay, say, like, it would take Bijan Robinson. Say you move on from Zeke. Mm-hmm. And you move on from again. I'm not yeah. trying to mm. get possible. rid of Zeke here. Very I'm, just, I'm just telling. I'm just doing a show here. I'm not trying to like move. <laughs> just doing a show here, guys. Just, doing, just a show guy. Just doing, a, just doing a show. Let's get that. That you know. I'm not DallasCowboys.com trying to get rid of players here. But if they move on, Thanks. yeah, I'm trying. Thanks. I mean, I really am. Yeah, but if they move on, <laughs> we need disclaimers around here. We now. do. We do. <laughs> we do. Well, that's the problem here. Just need to let everybody know. By the way, we've been doing this for twenty something years. I know. Years, that's but what just I'm saying. in case you didn't know, we love Seek. Everyone we're, we're loves We're just doing Zeke. shows. Here, we're, we're just doing we shows. Talk contract we're money. Just, we're just doing shows. Trust me. We really are. We love these guys. I'll say it. He needs. They need to cut him. They do. They they need to move on. Zeke. Yeah, I mean, I, they they need to move on. I'm, I'm sorry. They have to. I so much for all those disclaimers. <laughs> I know, but 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 even Steven said it the other day. Even Steven like that. They, he said it the Was other day. Show? What did he say? What did what did Steven? He say? he said, "Hey, we love Zeke. We love Zeke." He did the whole Brian yeah. thing with you know. But he also said <laughs> the whole thing like, "Hey, I love Zeke." But he said, "Hey." He's got to. He's got. It's got it's to gotta work. work yeah. It's got to work for both of us. And and if, if you cut him down to five million a year, which would be a big cut, that still doesn't look. That's still too much for what he's going to give you. I'm sorry. Tony Pollard gets hurt at, before halftime, and it was over. It was over. They had no shot to win and move the ball because they didn't have any weapons. And you've got to have some weapons. And so I I, I think you have to draft someone. First or second round, that guy's here. Pollard's here. Your third back, Malik Davis was making eight hundred thousand. Yeah, that's what the third back is supposed to make. So it's hard to do it on the under the constraints they, of the salary cap. They right? won't do it to Zeke because they respect him too much. Right. But the league minimum is what they want to pay for the third back, and I don't think they ha- they have. I wouldn't want to. I mean, it's like it's like giving a tip for a dollar. If you're not going to tip, just don't tip. Right. Don't don't do that don't and insult, insult them. Yeah. I don't think they'll do it. You think that five million is too much? It depends on the role. Like, let, let's assume for a second. Let's assume for a second. I that like they, what you just. But did, let me by say. Let, let's assume for a second that they draft Bijan Robinson in yeah. the first round. And let's also assume for a second. Even, I might even throw the horns up. I mean, for that. Of course you would. And let's just or the assume. Hooks. <laughs> Not the hooks. He's that wouldn't even be appropriate. Um, but <laughs> let's also. But let's also assume that they they don't put the franchise tag on Pollard and Pollard ends up leaving. Oh. Now, if you're in that okay. circumstance where Bijan's your top guy and you want to keep Zeke around and you're paying five million dollars, I feel good about that. I'm okay with that. However, how much is the tag again? Ten, ten point one. Yeah. It's like stealing money. Like that's so like you have to do it. The, the thing about that yeah. is it doesn't work that way. I know because the timing doesn't work. You have but, to make that yeah, decision. I, first. I get that. All I'm saying is let's assume they decide that they're not going to use a franchise tag on him. And then they would be in that situation because I do think Tony Pollard would get probably more money in free agency than the Cowboys would maybe be willing to yeah. pay a running back. That being said, I guess that would be the a scenario where I'd be like, five million for Zeke. I feel like that's okay. But I agree with you. I think the the delicate balance is and it should be, they respect him too much to give him a low ball offer. They're not going to say, "Hey Zeke, we'll pay you three hundred. We'll, we'll pay you three million. We'll pay you five hundred. We'll pay you eight hundred thousand. They're not going to do that to Zeke. And so, if he's the third running back, just the the dynamics of the salary cap says 
You can't pay your third running back five million dollars. Right. That just doesn't make and, sense. And the only thing maybe is if they keep him, they cut him down pretty pretty good, and then they they don't draft one to like the fourth round. Then that and that guy will be an all pro. Yeah. Right. <laughs> See, the thing about it's interesting with these running backs. The way, and again, the draft show coming up Man, we're next. Going late here. Uh, the yeah. Dra- overtime. That. I'm just trying to carry this thing to the draft show. To we'll be do with cross you. talk. Chris yeah. Bean. Yeah. Cross talk. <laughs> and let's just let them walk. In. Just real quick though. Yeah, I, I've got nowhere to go. I know you guys got meetings and stuff. Bean's like, I gotta switch it. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll finish right. up with Get this. Up. I'll finish up with this one though. This running back class is extremely deep. Okay. Yeah, I might gamble here. I might gamble. I might let Pollard walk and try and sign him, but to a lower number other than the franchise tag. Mm-hmm. And I might, and I might just, I'm going to move on from Zeke because I feel like the depth of this draft at running back will allow me that if I get wiped out where Zeke's gone, Pollard's gone, I know now I'm going to go draft one of these kids. Because there might be a situation with Pollard. Pollard might get out in the free agency and people go, hey, he's a good player, but he's not as good as Jamar Gibbs from Alabama. Nice crutches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's not, yeah. He's not gonna he's not as good as Zach Evans. I mean, there are, te- know, there are teams that might not be yeah. willing to pay any running back a exactly. second contract. Right? Exactly. Exactly. That's as, yeah. as we were having this com- or listening to you guys talk about those two guys, in my mind, I'm starting to think, okay, if I could trust the Cowboys to really use that money somewhere else and not be something similar as we saw after the Amari Cooper trade. I would I would try to cut them and find some money and go get digs. <laughs> yeah. But no, like <laughs> even on offense, yeah. I'm trying to look where can I really put some investment here because I do believe with the O line doing their job, you can plug in and I know it's not that easy sometimes, but you can plug in a good running back that's young, and and it would work for them. If you have uh, Dak healthy, doing everything he needs to do, the O-line kind of working and healthy as well, all you need is to really add weapons that can really go down the field and just have a younger person there at running back and make it work. And we saw, we saw it with Malik Davis, and I agree with Nick when – Pollard got hurt and he went out. They just couldn't. They, that was game over. Exactly. But if you get ready and prepare yourself for that, I think they can they can truly make it work. Yeah, you look at roster construction. I saw this graphic the other day. The running back, the top running back for the, the last, I think, well, I want to say it was like 10 or 15 Super Bowl winning teams. 2.1. I mean, yeah, they're making no money at all. And it's because you can, like the Chiefs. If you got the right Pacheco parts was, everywhere else, Pacheco was, was fine. Nine hundred eighty-two. Right, he was able. He was able to do the job. And and the running back position in the NFL is so much about juice. Do you have juice in your legs? Can you mm-hmm. can you make things happen when you need to? And it's what we saw from Tony Pollard this year. And Tony Pollard wasn't a first round draft pick. You know, you can get a guy who's younger. You can get a guy who is a lower draft pick, and you can get some good production, good enough production to win at the running back position. Which is another reason why it just doesn't make sense if you're going to pay. Especially if you're going to put the franchise tag on Tony Pollard to then have to go back and pay a significant amount of money to Zeke. That just it doesn't work in today's financial part of the NFL. I don't think they would have to cut his salary significantly to make it really work. You might not be able to cut it en- enough. Right. All right. Appreciate you guys joining us. Our producers tell us to get off the air, so we will get off the air, and we will be back next week on Wednesday. Till then, for Nick Eatman, Brian Broadus, Amber Garcia, I'm Derek Eelton. This has been the break live on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?